Wake your bitch ass up. Tommy G. Identify yourself, Sandy. Uh, my name is Kalen Haywood. I am a state representative for the 16th district in Milwaukee, which is downtown and part of the north side. Okay, uh, so you just so get into it, like fill me in and fill everybody else in about uh, who you is and uh, what you do. So I'm a state representative, like I said, and a state representative is a part of our state government. So state government is ran by the governor, he's in the executive branch. We have the legislative branch, which is the state senate. There's 33 state senators for the entire state. And then there is 99 state representatives in the assembly or the house. Uh, we each represent about 55, 57,000 people around the state. Okay. Um, how old are you? I'm 23. 23 years old. How long you been doing this for? Uh, this is, it's been, it's been four years. So I've been joining this, <coughs> I'm elected in 2018, uh, sworn in 2019. I'm going into my third term in January. So I get sworn wow. in real soon and I'm excited to get back to the work. You know, uh, people talk about just what needs to change. We, we really, it's, it's important to have people at state government and in state government. Um, we talk about the budget. Our state budget is billions of dollars, like $70 billion. Yeah. And that funding gets around the state to talk about when you talk about jobs and housing and you talk about uh, increasing public safety, but education, stuff like that. Like, that's where those dollars need to be. So it's important to have people at the table when we're discussing that. Exactly. So, but then again, it goes to show, like, a lot of people and a lot of youth and the people around your age and around my age – they really don't even know nothing about this because they're not really focused and they're not really tuned in to it. That's why I brought you on the show. If you can really let them know that it's a big thing, like with voting and with all that. You know what I'm saying? It's a big thing because it dictates your life and your livinghood, you know? No, definitely. I mean, that's why I ran for office in the first place, you know? Uh, we got so many young people who doing, who are doing great stuff around the city who motivated, got goals, uh, make out plans what they want to do, but then... Uh, they either don't get the support they need, so they they, they let go of that dream, or uh, they get told to wait. They get told like you can't do it. Wait, like right now ain't your time. And when you do that, you run the risk of them making. We young, we make mistakes. You run the risk of them making mistakes that they can't come back from. And now that hope, that vision, and that, that goal they had is sometimes become unreachable. So I'm wanting to inspire young people like to get involved, do whatever your dream is, go live it. But also, it's important that you at the table when it comes to talking about politics and government because uh, when we make laws, we vote on laws all the time. Those laws do not expire in two years, a year, whatever. They stay on the books until somebody changes them again. So as a young person, this is our future we're talking about. Yeah, so These you could be the one that changes it yep. down the line. Yep. And if you're, not, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. So making sure you're at the table having a voice or you're supporting people who are at the table fighting for you and fighting for that voice. Um, so it's important that you show up and support them because they can't do it by themselves either. Okay, okay. Um, how was it like you growing up, you know, growing up in the, in the, in the, in the city of Milwaukee, like, how was it like, how did you stay focused and then get, you know, sidetracked because, of, you know, it's a lot of stuff yeah. going on. Like, how you do it? Um, I mean, grew up in Milwaukee. 
And like, I always knew I wanted to run for office. I was like, I was young. I think I was maybe eight when Obama got sworn in. Obama oh, yeah. won the first okay. time. And uh, they played his swearing in in class that day. I'm like, you know, if he can do it, I can do it. Like, he looked like me. And I think it's so important that you, young people get exposed, people that look like them doing great, dope stuff, uh, exactly. so they can see themselves doing it. So uh, growing up in New York, I always wanted to do. Uh, I was eight, so I didn't really get involved when I was eight. But yeah. in high school, uh you, know, you you grow up, you see, you see, you watch the news, and social media was starting to take off then, yeah. and you see stuff happen all the time. And when you see the news, it's a young black boy that looks just like me, um, even though he's a little older. But these is my peers; these people look just like me. So, uh, getting frustrated, seeing seeing what was happening, uh, seeing the headlines, seeing people who were in power, who were in office that we expect to make change and, and make life better for us, and seeing the frustration of seeing folks not do that, and them just sitting around and not. Not being a voice, not being, a, not making a change, just sitting there, literally sitting in the office. The frustration, but I'm like, you can't just be frustrated if you ain't gonna get in the game and play. So yeah. you gotta actually get in the game and play and be a part of it. You can't just sit back and complain. So people like even now, now today's world, you people gonna comment on Twitter or Facebook or whatever about how they feel about the issue, but you gotta get involved. It's, it's gotta take it off social media and actually get in the field and start making yes, and actually part of that do it change. because it's not gonna change. Yep. Everybody gotta really work together and come together and. Stop just thinking about it and complaining about it. We really got to get out here and work yep. and do it, and it's gonna it's gonna pay off. Yeah, and then when people see you doing it for yourself, now they more like inclined to uh, help out or pitch in, but also take you more serious. They yeah. see you actually caring, you actually getting involved. So okay, we we got we got we got to make room for that person because they demanding a seat at the table. Okay, yep. Um, I seen you. Um, you been a lot of stuff. I seen you protesting and talking. Um, you know, on the news a few times and. And stuff like that, and uh, you know, praying for people, giving um, encouraging words and stuff like that. For um, it was an incident when you went and talked. Uh, I think uh, someone has passed away. I think in a car accident or something, or in the shooting a kid or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I seen you talking um, on the news. So you do a lot for our community, and um, they need to acknowledge you and uh, you know, support you and um, you know, give you your flowers because you do a lot. You young, and this is the future right here. He's gonna be the one that dictates what's going on, and he's gonna be. He is really the one that's fighting for us and for our culture and for our well being. You know what I'm saying? He is one of the people that that y'all need to know, you know, and um, need to acknowledge too. That's yeah. what I believe. I appreciate. I appreciate it. And be like, you really want to be. Uh, you know, I looked at state government when I ran back in 18. Uh, there was nobody. My age, like I think the closest Ever. person my age is maybe 10, 12 years older than I was. Yeah. Nobody my age, um, we, ain't, we ain't out of the 132 elected officials at the state, uh, there are only nine black people out of the 132. Wow. So you have this big fight of you got nine people trying to represent the entire state of black people. Because yes. um, there's black people all around Wisconsin, period, point blank. Uh, yeah. Even though you know people that, are you live in Wisconsin? It's far as no, it's black people around Wisconsin. Yes, living, living in black, Wisconsin. Yes. Um, but like, thinking, looking in that, like you got to, I had to get involved, and I want to be a voice, but also let young people know, like, like you can do it. Like, you can like be the be that role model and be that encouraging that person, encouraging people. Because yes. you talk about uh, one of the things we talk about is like food deserts, and that's when people don't have access to food. Uh, but one thing I realized in 8, 2018 was there was a hope desert. People in Milwaukee just didn't have hope. Black people, black black and brown communities just didn't have hope that stuff was going to change, stuff was going to get better, or that anybody in elected office actually heard them. I knocked on so many doors when I ran for office that. People was like, this is the first time somebody ever came knocking on my door and asked for my vote. And, and it was actually you. Yeah. And I'm like, exactly. that's crazy, Mike. Because, you know, you literally vote for people in state government, city government. You vote for judges that you people go see. You vote for all that stuff. Um, yes. But they don't, people don't always come around knocking on doors. So getting to those doors. Um, but I tell people, like, voting is so important because when you look at, so somebody called my office. And they got to get an issue we, they want us to fix. One, we look up and see if they're in my district, if I represent them, if I should be the one handling it, or we should call their state rep or state senator about it. Um, but also, I was always looking to see if you voted. And we're going to yeah. mention, like, hey, go vote. Um, because we want you to go vote and get involved because I know there's elected officials who um, look at those numbers and look at those areas and, like, well, this community don't don't go vote. So you're not a real threat to them keeping their job. you want to go vote. And, like, whether it's your one vote or not, your community going to go vote shows that you are getting involved in the process. And we talk about holding people accountable. That's how you hold them accountable because they know you're going to come out and vote the next election. Uh, exactly. But also, like, in, like, that one vote is so important because people can lose seats by one vote. I can lose my election by one vote, two votes. It can happen. So, like, every vote do count. It really do especially count. Especially when it get that close. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, how did you feel... Like, was you excited? Was you scared? Was you nervous? Like, what was going through your mind when you first ran? 
Um, as a young, as the youngest person, you know, to really run for, like, how was you feeling? So I remember in 2018, I got a call um, asking if I wanted to run for it. People knew I wanted to run. And I remember pacing back and forth in the room I was in. Like, if I say yes to this, my life going to change forever regardless. Whether I win or lose, my life is going to be different. Yes. Um, but I said yes to it. I announced back. I announced, and it was 100 days between the time I announced and the, and the campaign. And honestly, I think I was in such a tunnel vision. From yeah. 100 days, like, we got to go get it. Like, we was working nonstop, sun, down, sun up to sun down, and it was going in the house still doing work um, after the sun went down. But we did it for 100 days, and I kind of just – I was – in that zone, focus. Um, one thing I think it did do, I always tell people running for office is one of the most mentally, physically, and emotionally challenging things you're going to ever do, for sure. Um, yeah. You're literally putting your life on the line. You're putting your life out on the showcase for people to make opinions about what you do, ask, ask questions, look exactly. look up your past. You're putting a lot on the line of running for it's office. It's good and bad. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I did it. I, I don't think it really kicked in. So, I went on, on in August in that primary and like I ain't gonna lie, it was emotional. Like everybody, everybody on the team was emotional because we had all we all invested so much that in the hundred days. Like to, we risked it, we ran, we risked it all. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it really set in until I got in the cap, say capital, I got my office, I sat in my desk, and I was like, man, this is real. But like at that point, the the full weight of the That's job real. sunk in because it's cool, and I it was. When I won, it made national news, and it was, it was uh, you get the fame and notoriety from, it, which yes. is which is cool and which is fun. But then you like, I got a real job to do. This is like I got a real work to do because yes, we need you. We need you, and like people, some people are depending on you to get their benefits or they, or the, the support they need or change laws to help better help them out. Um, but people need you to be a voice. So this ain't just like it's fun, it's cool, it, it's super dope. I, I love what I do, um, but at the same time, it's the responsibility of you got a job to do. People count on you to do your job. So it's like, do you ever get a chance to live, like, just to do what you want to do? Like, is, is it a time where you just working constantly every day, every day? Um, it, it's always work. We always on. Um, we always, as elected officials, we always on. Um, rather, I'm at, in the, like I'm on my official schedule. I'm at the Capitol, around the city, doing stuff, around the state, doing stuff. Um, but even my, I have to eat with my family or my friends or whatever, on a date, whatever. People will come to me and be like, Hey, I want to talk to you real quick about something. And, like, they will talk and talk and talk. Like, the grocery store, Yeah, I spend most of my time talking to people versus actually buying groceries. But, <laughs> wow. um, so, yeah, it's, it's a lot of, it's, it's like you always own. Um, I do like to go out of town. Most of the officials like to go out of town from wherever they're from and have some yeah. fun. But, uh, okay. so, travel is important. Making that time for you is important. I think just anybody, though, that self-care, making time for self-care is important. I think we, we often neglect that. that. We yeah. all, yeah, we need yeah. that. Like, like, little stuff is take care of yourself because at the end of the day, um, I mean, whatever work you're doing, whether it's in politics or in government or whatever field you're in, the work gonna happen with or without you being there. Yeah. So you gotta take care of you. Okay. Um, do you think you're gonna ever run for the president? Like, is that your goal? Like, what's your long term goal? As I should ask, what is your long long term goal with all this? We you see yourself in about like five to ten years. Five to ten years. So I'm 23. So I ain't got a lot of options. What I can run for. So right now, I'm really truthfully. Um, there's only maybe one other higher seat I could run for at this point. Yes. Um, right now, uh, but in five to ten years, I'd be 28, 30, something, 33. Yeah. Uh, we don't know. I don't know yet. I mean, I feel like one of my, my biggest things, like people run for office and they keep running because they ran already, got the name and the title already, they keep running. Um, want to make sure, one, I'm still earning it. But, uh, you know, like the U.S. Senate is always an option. We like, definitely would love to be in the U.S. Senate as long as 100 U.S. Senators in, this, in the country and would love to be one of the 100 um, and really make an impact on a federal level. But, yes. um, you know, I'm not taking president off the table at all. Not at all. I, I think that at some point if it come to it, you know. You think you can do it? Yeah, yeah. I think. If, I mean, I think, I think, but it come like, it ain't just me. It's, it's we can do it. Yeah, like, we, we, can do we it, need yeah. to all do it. We got to do it together because um, can't do it alone. But gonna need the support of my city. Exactly. I'm just saying, it. you, 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 the head, we the body. Yeah. So, so I'm, do I'm, you I think you can lead or. Yeah, when the, when the time come and the time right, I'm definitely down to do it and okay. um, making sure to support there. But yeah, when the time come, I'm definitely down to do it because that'd be crazy. Obama can't be our last black president. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm rooting for you. I'm supporting you and uh. That'd be crazy to really be the president, like really run the United States. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a crazy job. As I've been in government more, yeah. like my job crazy. So I can only imagine like Is it a lot of paperwork and typing you doing or is it a lot of really word to mouth? Um 
it's a lot more public facing. So we got we got a staff. Everybody has staff, and like without our staff, we cannot do what we do. So in my office, I got a chief of staff who run my office who can okay. run the show. Uh, when I'm not there, he, I got a comms director who do my handle my communication stuff. Um, policy director who handles all my policy stuff like, and do some laws and legislation. Uh, got on the campaign side, I got campaign managers, finance directors that help me raise money. Um, got comms people on the campaign side, graphic designers on both sides. So like your team is important. Wow. Um, so like that's that's, a, that's good. Man. Yeah, that's good. That's a lot. I like that. I really do. Um, yeah. So we're not be able to do it on my team. I, 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 they do, they do, they do the work, and I, I, I show up and. I do my part, but without my team, I would not be able to do what I do. Yeah, um, it's like you different um, because you a leader. You're not a follower. You know what I'm saying? Growing up as a young black man in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, they already judge you. You already, you know what I'm saying? You really beat the statistics. You know what I'm saying? You really did that and overcame that. And now you living, you living proof right now because it's like they all judge us, you know, because we black and they always wish bad things on us, but you really took the good route and did the right thing and you still you helping others now. Yeah, it's still a work in progress. Like I tell people all the time, like when I got my suit on, I got my suit and tie, I got my, yeah. my, my lapel pin on, they it's, it's yes sir, no sir, it's they holding the doors, they nice, they real nice. Okay. Um but then when I take my suit off and put my regular clothes on or my jogging suit on, uh you you begin to see people not make the connection. And oh. I, I, but I'm cool with it though, cause I'm gonna walk in. I'm not gonna tell you who I am. I want you to treat me how you would treat me, not knowing who I am. Yeah, and then when they find out who you, they gonna be like, Yeah, cause like, I want to see how you yeah, treat everybody come, else. Yes. Cause if you if you treat, cause I feel like I'm in a position now where I can hold people accountable. So if you're treating other people bad because you don't think they got no power to do anything, you're stereotyping. Yeah, come on, that. it's cool. Let's do yeah. it. Um, and then when you find out who I am, you're like, yeah, that's a problem. You can't treat people like that. So I, I use that to be um, a part of just holding people accountable every day, like using the position I'm in to be a voice for people who won't always have that ability to hold them people accountable how far they treat them. Okay. Um Yeah, so like um do you guys have like um like who funds y'all? Like do y'all have a place like we, we we can donate to or do y'all help others? Like how do that go? So uh it's a lot of money in politics. Like every campaign cycle yeah, it's, 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 it's a, a lot of money. bunch of money like millions of dollars get spent every campaign cycle. Um, but we, I want a big part of our job is raise money. Like money is influence in politics. Money is a power in politics. Yeah. Um, so having a strong financial support system behind you is important. So, um, you call them your donors. Uh, donors are big donors. Donors can be donors that donate the max. So it could be a thousand dollars from my race. It could be uh, $10,000 for the governor's race. Yeah. Uh, but also donors can also be small donors, $25, $10. Like Obama, he nickel and dimed his way to becoming president, getting the small donors yeah. to donate. Because when you get that $25 times a thousand people, that has some money. So like yeah. donors are really anybody that want to support. So like when I got, I got donors who are the bigger donors who, um, we definitely want to make sure they keep being big donors because they support the bigger things. But we also encourage everybody. Like when you got elected officials, you support, Send them ten dollars. Send them five dollars to their campaign. Uh, it's not to them. It's to the campaign. Get used for the campaign uh, yeah. expenses. But like, send them the money because they need the backing. They don't got the financial support. They can't. They don't. They don't, they don't get on good committees. They don't get the real influence. Or influence votes and policy. Like you, they need that support behind them. Okay, that's good, man. That's good. And uh, I would say, like, um, what about like the few? Okay, so listen here. So what if? What if um, someone needs something from y'all? Like, what if, like, someone is, like, you know, like, what about the homeless people and the people in the shelter and all that? Like, what if they come to you and be like, oh, I need this, I need that? How would you go about it? Like, do y'all have places for them? Or or, or um, how should I say this? I'm trying to word it right. Like, do y'all have programs for them, like yeah. for the homeless people and stuff like that? Yeah, I think one of my biggest abilities is to be a connector. So when people do need yeah. help, whether it's whether they need help finding a house because they're homeless, they need mental health support, they need help. Oh, yeah, mental help. health. That yeah. is serious. Mental health support, need help getting into school, need help getting a job, like whatever it may be. Um, in addition, we in, we get to meet so many people and rub so many shoulders and be yeah. able to use that to not help my community out, help to make that connection for folks. Um, but even like, I think a part of being elected is not just being elected, wearing a suits, wearing, doing, doing the business side of it all. It's about getting involved in the community. So you still should be volunteering at places, doing stuff on the holidays, Christmas, things giving um but really supporting your community like you never stop being a community activist you always keep being a community activist unless I mean, some people do they stop but you should never stop being a community activist and really volunteering back in your community that made you where you are and support you to get where you are so uh definitely try to do both but definitely always willing to point people like i tell people all the time like whatever question you may got it might not even be my direct job but i can help connect you to somebody who got the information dm me on instagram hit me on twitter email my office call my office we will find a way to help you out that's good. That's good, man. Because everybody need help, and it's like 
we got to give back and help to really help the community, you know. And like it's 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 a handful of people that will try to get over and use the system to get over, but it's another hand another other handful of people that really need y'all and really need that support and need that connection to, you know, because they might do be going through hard times. That, Single mothers out here, single fathers out here, homeless people, all that. Yeah. People with mental health, they all need that help. So I'm glad that y'all provide that. When somebody life change, like when they, they dra- drastically change their life and they become successful or they just get on their feet and do good, they can always point to that one person they met or they talked to that had put them on, period, point blank. Uh, and if I can be that person or can help connect you to that person that's going to put you on, I'm going to do it. Like that's what we got to do. Like we got to help support each other. Um, otherwise, we ain't going to grow. Is you um so you consider yourself like a mentor? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you ever want to like get a group of young guys and, or that's too much? You got a lot going on. No, I'm you? I'm working on that. I think that uh we got to we got to keep doing that because no matter like you got you got to make the time for it. I think but I'm working on that because like you got it like young people got young young black dudes got so much talent and so much skill and and they so smart like you got to figure out how to get them in a the room and also get them around each other. Your network is going to be important. Like a part of what I do is my network that gets you the yes. access. Um, so who you know and what spaces you in is going to be important. So if you get a bunch of young black men in a room and you can put them on game, give them the knowledge they need to go out and, and explore, but also at the same time. Um, give them the resources in the network. I think, you know, you got young people who, uh, you, somebody that's 30, talking to a 15-year-old. Yeah. You ain't old. You're 30. You ain't old. But to that 15-year-old, you twice their age. You have yes. In their head, you have no clue what it's like to be 15. When you got somebody that's 21, 22, 23, you're closer to my age. I might listen a little more. Even though I might say the same exact thing you would have said as a 30-year-old. So now get them in a room around each other. Uh to make sure they can connect and also bounce ideas off each other. Now, when they as they go forward, they got that support amongst themselves. Yes. Okay. Um. I, let me know your experience. Uh, your first time sitting at that big table with everybody. You there there by yourself, suit on at that big table. How did you feel? Like, um, a little weird. Not gonna lie. Like you, I walk in so many meetings where I'm the only black person in the room. I walk in so many meetings where me and my staff are only black people in the room. Uh, and. It's, it's weird for sure, like um, but talking, then, but like then it's like to them, you knew how to talk in. Yeah, but then but I, you know I realized though, um, they li- they listen. If you if you command the respect, you command the room. They gonna yeah. listen. Like I think a lot of time they try to convince you that you can't do it. Yeah. Once they see that you understand that, hey, I got power in my voice. I got power in who I am. Exactly. I'm, I'm gonna stand on what I'm saying. They they just they, they tend to f- get it together and then start to listen and fall in line. But um, it definitely is weird. But also it's it's almost confirmation too. Like I need to be here because nobody was here in the room before. Exactly. Um, I know you said when you was eight, you um, watched Obama when, you know, when he got elected and got sworn in. Um, is there anybody else you look up to? Like any role models or, you know? I always have felt like everybody, everybody I meet, because I think no matter who you meet, like you take away something from everybody. Whether it's good or bad, honestly, like rather I don't want to be like dude, so I don't want to do that, yeah. or I, I want to be, be like, like dude, dude, so I need to do that. Exactly. And it's like it's different aspects. It's the business side, it's the personal side, it's the fitness, it's whatever. You got everybody. You take away something from everybody, and like even like an eight, year, like an eight year old, he might say something, and people are like, oh, "That's crazy, he eight. But like you might be like, "Oh, he owned something. He don't know, but he owned something." Yeah, exactly. Um, so I just try to make sure, no matter like whoever I'm around, like everybody got something that I think can inspire you to do something, whether it be good or bad, they can inspire you. Uh, so like I, everybody I meet just take something away from that and just sit back and listen more than you talk. Okay, that's good. Um, so uh, you don't have like uh, actual role model. I'm just saying like you know Obama or you know the like why why what about being the mayor? Um, is that, is that how far is that a higher a, a, the position you in right now? How far you got to go to be the mayor? I wouldn't. So going, I'm in I'm in state government. So coming back to the city would be me coming back to the city from the state. Um, oh, okay. definitely not off the table for mayor. If I did come back to the city, it would be to run for mayor. Okay, um, it wouldn't. But I, I probably wouldn't run for city council. But um, if I came back, it'd be for mayor. But I mean, I think I mean role models and my pops played a big role in that. Like okay. seeing somebody completely turn their life around and make something from it and get involved in real estate and like be inspirational. Like you know, even when you come from crazy, crazy situations, yes. you can still make something good happen. And like okay. my thing is like you can do so much in one generation. Uh, where my pops was when he was 23, and where I'm, when I'm 23, two complete different 180 parts of the spectrum. So, like, okay. now when my son 23, he can be someone totally different than I've been. I, I wasn't able to obtain at 23 or maybe ever in my life. But now my goal is to make sure I'm putting my kids in a place where they can be successful and they can thrive. Exactly. You have any kids? Nope. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. It's going to be admitted. It's going to be admitted. <laughs> it's yeah. gonna, it's gonna be admitted. Do, you, do you think it's a distraction? <laughs> um, 
I mean, I think uh, having kids, you definitely change your schedule. You definitely got you got some you got some extra stuff. Now. You got some extra baggage. You got you to take exactly. with you. And um, also, me when I was me and kids, I just I feel like I want to make sure I'm in a place where I don't got to change my lifestyle to have a kid too much. I can support okay. my kid and give you my kid a certain lifestyle. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. So, do you so think, like, yeah, yeah. Do it the right way. So you think about marriage at some point? At some I'm point. So you do, would you rather get married then have a baby, or if you have a baby then y'all get married? Like, how would you? I don't know. See, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm open to either one. I mean, I think, of course, every, the, the, the ideal okay. way is to get married and have a kid, but, you know, stuff happens. And, yeah, stuff uh, do happen. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you dating? I'm definitely dating. Well, um, see, stuff happens. So, stuff. What, so That's what I'm saying. Stuff happens. If so, you're yeah. dating, stuff might happen. Then a baby come. And you step up and be a boss about it. That is what it is. So, yeah. um, of course, I'd love to get married first at some point in my life and then have kids. It's going to be a minute for both, hopefully. But uh, stuff will happen all the time. You got to. You focus right now. Yeah, I'm focused. On your career. On my career. On my career. Um, for myself, personally, I'm still you know, trying to finish school, still uh, trying oh, yeah. to make sure my career is straight. Um, but also, again, it's important, it's important for me, but like, I want to make sure my kids are in a good situation. What degrees do you have? Your high school diploma and yeah, I'm at, college now. just my high school diploma. I'm in school right now. I'm getting a finance degree. I got about a year and a half left, but yeah, just my high school diploma so far. Yeah, but you got a lot on your plate right degree now. Degree coming soon though. So yeah, I, 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 I took some time off when I got in the office and focus on the work. But like, you can always, always find the reason to be pushing school off or pushing off that next goal you got. You can always find a reason. Something always coming up. Yeah, but you gotta make the time for it and prioritize it. Do you um? Do you have certain courage and words for the youth and for for everybody for the world? That's that's everybody that's watching. Do you have any um advice for them? Yeah, I, listen. Find your team, your support system. Um, maybe one or two people. It may be a bunch of people. But find people who are gonna support you and really sit back and self reflect. Like, how can I use my team that's around me to support whatever my goal is gonna be, whatever my hope is gonna be? And for young people right now, y'all are young. Y'all either in high school still. Y'all just got out of high school. Y'all don't have a lot of baggage. Your number one responsibility is you. You you are number one. So like no, rule number one, take care of number one. Um, so figure yeah, out how exactly. you can use that flexibility you got, I like that. that freedom you got. How can you go live your goal? Like don't be afraid to go explore options. You got time to try something, fail, try something, fail, try something, then it work out. So go explore, go travel, go go live your life. Um, but at the end of the day, try to whatever your goal is to change your situation, do it. And then like find people, like myself included, who will support you and help you do that if we can. Um, so just go out live that dream but you gotta create that plan so you gotta know what your end goal is I think exactly. so many people they don't even know what they want yeah, what you just, wanna you, do you kinda just going day to day just like you know letting yeah. stuff happen but like, no you gotta figure out what your end goal is and then work back so and I know I wanna be one. here how do I get to plan to, how do I get to point Z like, I started at A but how I get there but you gotta have that end goal in mind and now it's, it always change timelines change stuff happen um, but you gotta have that end goal in mind you also, stay focused you know, people to support you they gotta yes. be able to see your end goal too they gotta know what they buying into that vision they buying into exactly and um, I would tell you guys to, uh, you know, for the whole world, just uh, be yourself, man. Be yourself mm -hmm. and uh, stop being a follower, man. Because, you know, why they don't see the reason why the youth, like you said, a kid see one image. They just want to get that. They want to get all that money right there and there. You know what I'm saying? But they don't even know. Y'all can get it. Y'all can get more than that if y'all uh -huh. just take the right steps yeah. and, and pay attention. You know? Just stay focused, man. People always want fast money, but yeah, it's one fast money. I want long money. So if it's going to exactly. take a little longer to get it, that's cool, but it's going to be long money. And you're going to have it for a yeah. long time. And it's forever. generational wealth. I'm passing it down to my kids. So exactly. quick money, cool, but how I get that long money that when I'm 60-year-old and retired on an island somewhere, like how I'm getting that long money. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, what do you want to – um, what would you want to tell – what would you want to tell someone that, that – um. That's trying to get to where you at. What would you tell them? Like, that's trying to get in your spot right now. What would you let them know to do? Uh, to get involved in your community. Start volunteering. Start doing the work. Volunteering. Um, find, volunteering. Yeah. Volunteering. That volunteering. is. Volunteering. <laughs> that's good. Uh, and then find the issue you're passionate about. Rather, whatever it may be. Whatever, whatever you truly care about, you will make the, um, either as mostly impacted you and your family. Okay. Um, something you've seen your moms go through, whatever. Find that one issue, rather it's. Reducing crime, rather it's um, getting people getting people in better housing, better education, a better environment, whatever whatever your your thing is, find anything you're passionate about and really plug in, become that expert. You cannot be an expert at everything, but you can be an expert in one thing for sure. So become that expert um, and just get involved. And then when you think the time is right, announce that you're gonna run for well, plan that you're gonna run for office. But when you announce, if you've been doing the work, people will support you. People gonna get behind you and support you because um, they seen you do the work. Like don't like do the work and it's gonna it'll come to you. Exactly, and another thing too, um, y'all. The violence 
got to get cut down because, you know, every action does not need a reaction. Sometimes it's okay to be the bigger person and walk away. Just be like, you know what, you got it. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you want to get one life to live. There's no second goals. There's no redos. There's no, oh, let me try it again. Either you're going to throw your life away or get your life to either way it go. It don't, it don't even be worth it, man, you know, because um, y'all got to start thinking more. You know what I mean, thinking more and just thinking about the bigger picture. Is this is is it worth this right now? You know what I'm saying? Is it worth it? And it don't be worth it, man. It don't I, be worth it. And I used to be a hothead before I ran for office. I ain't gonna lie. I used, to, I, I used to be a hothead, but running for office definitely taught me well. I had to get, learn some patience, but now that I'm wow, I never old, knew that. Yeah, now that I'm older and wiser, like, hey, patience is real. But like, it's a lot of fights or a lot of just, and like, I don't mean just physical fights. It's a lot of fights and battles and like, yes, that, like it ain't even worth your time, your energy. Like, just, so I'm cool on you. I'm just you. Go, you do that because a lot of time people see you doing good and see you being successful or see you, you living your dream, you living your plan out. They do stuff on purpose to get in your way. They want you to get distracted. They want to be that distraction. Don't let them do that. So what was your what was your mind frame is like, you know, coming up when you was making your mistakes and all that. I'm glad you didn't make no big mistake because it would have messed up your future now, you know? Yeah. But. Um, I think I always knew I wanted to be something, so I always tried to be like, I tried to think stuff through. But, I mean, I was young. So, like, you know, you yeah. make mistakes. You, you you make miscalculations on what you should do. But um, as I definitely, as I got older, I, I become Yeah, a you lot, got it together. You I become a lot together. more patient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, patience is the key, too. Yeah. Um, with a lot of stuff. And if y'all want to holler at him about anything, you know, he got his hands in a lot of stuff the community that y'all probably don't know. But now y'all do know. Yes, he's young. Yes, he's black. And, yes, he's in that office, man. And, uh. What's your name on Instagram for they can um, follow you and on Twitter and all that for they can go, you know, contact you? Yeah, hit me on Instagram, Twitter. It's the same name, uh, Kalen Haywood, W-I. That's K-A-L-A-N-H-A-Y-W-O-O-D-W-I, Stanford, Wisconsin. Um, but yeah, hit me on Instagram, hit me on Twitter. Uh, I, I always just try to respond and whatever you need, let me know. And, or just it's good to have connections and know people that just, exactly. you out, just to know people. So, and, this, yourself, and, this, and this is one that you need to know. This is a good person y'all need to know. And he our future. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, hit me up. You know, we on Real Street Comedy. So hit me up. You yeah, know, you need some advice, whatever it may be, some support. Let me know. I'm definitely down to help out. All right. Thanks for having you, man. Hey, I mean, man. thanks for coming on the show, man. Yeah. yeah.